As a child of the 60s in the United States, one of the messages I got from my parents and from my school and the society overall is that in your life, being able to make a contribution to the world is really important. I've chosen science as the way to do that. And so having my research be relevant to the um, easing of pain and suffering in the world has been very important. My primary interest is in the mechanisms that control the development of the brain from the earliest point in life at birth and then through um, adolescence. When you see a child develop, it's natural to think about what's actually happening. If you imagine a newborn baby and how much change there is in the first year of life, I've developed a particular passion for understanding this one disorder, Rett syndrome. It affects about one in 10,000 girls. And you might think that's not a, a, a large number, but it's quite a devastating disorder. And it's my um, conviction that if we can understand how a single gene when mutated gives rise to uh, aberrant brain development, that it might have a impact on our ability to understand more complex neurological disorders in general. You bring uh, a baby home from the hospital and um, everything seems to be perfectly normal. And typically for the first year to year and a half, things are relatively normal. And then somewhere between six months to a year and a half, sometimes a little bit later than that, you start to get this feeling in the pit of your stomach that something just isn't right. Um, the children stop developing normally. Sometimes they stop being able to feed themselves. They can't hold their bottle anymore. They get very cranky and they're crying. Um, they stop sleeping at night. And then from there, you know, things get worse. As a parent, as you start to realize that your daughter is going to be severely, severely disabled, it's the worst feeling in the world, I think. It was almost unbearable. My daughter now at 21 is in a wheelchair. Um, she's unable to speak. Um, she has seizures. She's fed through a feeding tube. She has anxiety problems, um, muscular skeletal problems. She's very tight. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. She handles it with such grace and patience, and she has a sense of humor. She gives us so much affection, and She's amazing, and she's the soul of our family. Our research has unfolded essentially over a 30-year period. And now with new technologies, for example, a method called single cell sequencing, we're able to look at the individual cells to get really crystal clear answers that um, we've been seeking for a long time. We take some blood and put it into a dish and then convert those blood cells into human neurons that can be studied and we can study differences in neuronal connectivity in terms of the wiring of the brain that underlie um, mental disorders. So we're very close to being able to pinpoint in the genome what's responsible, and that's the first step towards developing a therapeutic. I don't expect a 100% like it never even happened cure for Chelsea. But I do think that there can be dramatic improvements. Um, 
you know, could we, could we lessen the rigidity? Could we get her walking? Could we have some hand use? Could she learn to speak again? I think those things are possible, potentially. We won't know until we try. But I think, you know, we're at the point now where we're going to have an opportunity to try. And that's really exciting. This was something that even several years ago seemed to be impossible. And now we're facing a frontier of understanding this awesome structure and how it's made, how it's put together, and how it functions. I think that we're on the verge of uh, a revolution. It's very inspiring and very moving to be in this field because we really like to take on the hardest problems. And if you want a hard problem, this is it. Understanding how the brain works, how these disorders emerge in young people. These are mysteries that we're beginning to unravel. It's an extraordinarily exciting time, both in science and society, for neuroscience and the field of psychiatry. It will actually change the world. I, th I really believe that.